So what do you think about somebody going down to the DNA lab, getting their DNA tested, mm -hmm. and, and it comes back and says, oh, you know, you have these Jewish ancestors? I mean... I have no quarrel with them. Would you accept that? If it, if Absolutely. It's, oh, okay. Because it's so possible, because they're so scattered, right? Yeah, I would never argue with it. Mm -hmm. The director of this film, Paul Wittenberger, and I are just a couple of white guys. We've never been told that we're Jewish or have any Jewish ancestors. But we're going to go down and get our DNA tested and just find out if we do. We match your DNA profile against uh, over 400 population groups worldwide. Mm -hmm. And we present you with a top 50. And for ancestral DNA, uh, we don't have to get thumbprints. Uh, I mean, it's not a legal document. Right. So. That's all we need is the swab and the name. So these will go out tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we should get results back in about three to four weeks. A few weeks later, Paul and I got our results back. And just like they said, we were a mixture of a whole bunch of different nationalities. We had everything from Arab to Brazilian, Native American. And there were a lot of things on there that were a big surprise. And sure enough, when we looked at our deep ancestry, which goes back further than the top 50, we both had markers for Jewish DNA. So I figured I'd get my grandma's DNA tested to see if Jewish made it into her top 50. We tested my grandma, she's 94 years old. Uh-huh. And we wanted to swab her, you know, while she's still with us. Oh yes, that, uh, that's very important. Yeah, so yeah. We, we got it. All right, grandma's results are right, in, let's check exciting. them out. All right, let's see her top 50 first of all. Number one. Ashkenazi Jew, number one. No way. So that explains why it was in my deep ancestry, because it's her number one of her 50 nationalities. And her number one result was Hungarian Ashkenazi Jew. So, so her number one result was Ashkenazi Jewish. Wow. Well, with DNA consultants, I mean, you know, we've done this for many, many years. I haven't seen that very often to let you know. Mm -hmm. And every report, like I'm saying, is unique. People are like, oh, it's probably very general. No, everybody's very unique. I don't know when I've seen number one uh, Ashkenazi. So that is really no. Cool. Yeah. I mean, maybe three or five times. So let times. me ask you this. That is very rare. So if grandma's DNA had number one Ashkenazi, is there any doubt that she's an Ashkenazi Jew? No. And if she's my grandmother, what does that make me? If you're Jewish. So I'm Jewish. You don't have to accept <laughs> the religion. Right, but I mean, ethnically you could, speaking. Ethnically, you are. You know, okay. whether you, well, how, so whatever you, you want to do with me, it. So you, so I've hold now on. pronounced you Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really what it all boils down to? I mean, good night. That's DNA. Are you kidding me? What, what about Jesus? What about faith in Christ? How in the world can God's people be determined by DNA? Look, it doesn't matter what our genealogy says. It doesn't matter what our DNA results are. None of that is even important. The only thing that really matters is that we are a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And I found so much proof that Israel there is not the Israel that God's talking about. But we who have believed in God, who have the faith of Abraham, we are the children of God. We are the seed of Abraham. It says in Romans 9 verse 7, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So the Bible says that the children of the flesh, the physical children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, these are, it specifically spells out and says they are not the children of God. In fact, in Galatians 3, it explains that we're the children of Abraham. It says, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. It's amazing to me though, how Christians overlook Galatians 3. Now I'm, I'm almost 70 years old, I'm an old man, but I've never, ever, ever heard a sermon on Galatians 3 verse 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Both of those are fantastic. Who is the heir to the promise? Whoever has Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 reads, 
Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Verse 19, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. According to this scripture, we are fellow citizens of Israel. Because back in verse number 12, he said, when you were without Christ, you were aliens of Israel. You were strangers and foreigners to Israel. But in verse 19, he says, now you are fellow citizens with the saints. So who is the true Israel? Is it some guy over in the Middle East who doesn't even believe in Jesus and is worshiping Shekinah? Or is it the true believer of the Lord Jesus Christ who's been grafted in and brought nigh unto Israel? It's very simple. Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 43, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Wow. They didn't bear fruits. They refused Jesus. They refused redemption. They refused to recognize the deliverer of Zion, the very Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, because of that, the kingdom is taken from you and given to another nation. Well, what is that nation? Is it Syria? Is it America? Is it England? Is it Germany? No, no, no. A spiritual nation. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The Bible's not a book about God blessing one nation. That's why God told Abraham, in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And that blessing is through Abraham's seed, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, that Abraham wasn't looking for a physical land. He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We as Christians are looking for a new Jerusalem. We're looking for a heavenly city. As Hebrews 11, the faith chapter points out, but now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. God has prepared a city for us, a city that we can't find physically on this earth because it's a heavenly city. It's something that God has prepared for those that have faith in him. When we're looking for Zion and when we're looking for Jerusalem we're not looking for the one which now is we're not looking for the one that we can touch we're not looking for the one that spiritually is Sodom and spiritually Egypt we're, we're looking for the one that is heavenly the one that is to come the Bible says in Hebrews 12 22 but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels so according to the New Testament Zion is the heavenly Jerusalem not the physical Jerusalem that now is, but the heavenly Jerusalem will descend down from heaven. That is our capital city. That is our Zion. And so I'm Israel. Those people over there are not Israel. That's why Paul said they're not all Israel, that are of Israel, maybe of Israel, genealogically speaking, but you're not Israel as God counts as what his original intent was, a people that are a praise and a glory to him. We as Christians are the chosen people of God. We are the true Israel, and we are marching to Zion. Well, you know, the, the name uh, of this video is Marching to Zion. We know that as a great uh, title of a gospel song, too. It means marching with Jesus at the very head of the formation. Yeah. You know, we sing songs like, we're marching to Zion. I love that song. I just love it. I mean, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. It's the city of God. It sits on the sides of the north. That's God's home. And one day he's going to bring it down to earth. It's going to be on the earth. We're going to inherit the earth because we are God's people. We have believed in Christ, are God's people. We are Israel. We're princes with God. And we're going to reign with him forever. I would love to see the Quran thrown away, destroyed, put in a bonfire. 
Not because I hate the Muslims. No, I would love for them to become Christians. I would love to see the, the Talmud in all its 36 or 38 volumes. Well, what a bonfire we could have with that. As a Christian, I say, let these books exist. Let the Quran exist. Let the Talmud exist. Because if people read those, and then they read the New Testament, you must come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is Lord.